want to thank everyone for showing up and uh, taking a look at uh, one of the uh, newest offerings from Celine Automotive. And uh, again, from uh, Steve Celine and myself, uh, we want to thank you for your attendance and uh, you're going to see something special. introduce the man himself, Steve Selene, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing. Well, thanks, Hans, and uh, it, it's great to, to be here. Um, obviously, Laguna is one of our favorite tracks, and we couldn't think of a, a more appropriate place to do an announcement in a new product showing of what we're going to then Laguna uh, specifically in the historic race to begin with. And in having all of these iconic Trans Am cars here today just adds that much more uh, credibility. The, um, on the business side of it is, uh, this is really our first major uh, press conference we've held since I've had uh, over the last several years, as a lot of people may have followed, um, is we've had a little bit of identity crisis with Celine, uh, but about a year ago I was able to uh, get my identity back and control of the company, so we're moving forward ahead like we have for the last 30 years. The, uh, and, and to start with that, um, we, we made an announcement uh, last month is now we actually are a publicly traded company. You can actually look at us on the stock exchange. We're on the over-the-counter bulletin board. Uh, we're traded under SLNN. So if you like the cars now, you can actually own a piece of the company as well, and we certainly encourage people to do that. But today isn't about our, about our company per se. Today really is more of a celebration and something that I have always fo followed and that is basically the, the pony cars um, of the 60s and early 70s, I think resonated with the American public like no other cars have. And obviously for the cars to still be in production today, it really is a testament to how it has uh, changed, if you will, a lot of people's perception of automotive transportation and the fun and the passion for that. But there was no other series like the SCCA Trans Am in the late 1960s and early 70s, I think that captured the imagination of everyone in racing. And that was really a heyday. And from a personal standpoint, it influenced me. I was obviously younger then, and I will tell you, when watching all of the, of the drivers there is what really influenced me to pursue a career in racing and obviously into automotive that we're doing today. The um, uh, as uh, in the in the past with uh, Celine, about uh, seven or eight years ago, we started a heritage collection, and we debuted at the New York Auto Show a special edition Mustang that was a tribute to Parnelli Jones himself, and that was a very successful. Uh, uh, product that we were very happy to to be part of and uh, the car was very successful is still around today and, and a lot of them are racing on the tracks we then followed that up with a Dan Gurney special number two Mustang from another iconic car that was raced in the Trans Am series and both of those cars if you've seen uh, competing this weekend uh, are still very active in the old Trans Am and you can see the new Celine vehicles that a lot of the car show but today we're really introducing three cars and the three cars as a trio is I think we're probably the only company in the world that actually could probably do this under one brand 
and that is, is to take three iconic cars that really had different manufacturing origins, put them under one roof, add a little bit of magic and touch, and uh, voila, come out with a very unique um, heritage collection that we're doing. And so I would like, at this point in time, we're going to introduce the first two, and then we're going to show the actual product of the third one. And in um, the first one, obviously, as no surprise, uh, here on my left, is one of the most iconic cars racing in the Tram Zone was the Plymouth Barracuda. This car was driven by Swede Savage, and Swede Savage was a young, up-and-coming race car driver that was more than competitive from the get-go. He actually, he was a teammate with Dan Gurney in running the cars. Um, actually, Dan Gurney drove in four, Swede drove in all the races, and really the car that was the fastest car and the car to beat was really Swede's car. It, it, it was on the podium a number of times, finished second, and finished second overall in the series that year in 1970. And one of the things that, um, that has the success of the car um, that went on with that was, was obviously how well the car did, but the, but the drivers really is what made the cars. And so as a tribute, and some of the things that we've always done at Celine, uh, we've always tried to go for the extra authentic and, uh, endorsement. The next car I would like to talk about that we're going to be doing here is obviously we have is the Mark Donahue Camaro. There really is a lot that's been written about it. In fact, in 1969, Mark won the Trans Am Championship for Chevrolet and has become one of the most iconic cars in the Chevrolet stable. So the so you've seen two that we're coming, coming up with, so maybe now you have probably an idea of what might the next car might be. And so we, in 1969, Ford introduced the Boss Mustang and um, we we certainly know a little bit about our history with Celine has been with uh, Mustangs. And we, as I mentioned before, we did the 1970 Parnelli Jones Mustang, which won the championship. But we thought it would be appropriate, actually, to go ahead and recreate 1969, which is when it all started. And there was a teammate to Parnelli called George Fulmer. And this Fulmer Mustang won a number of the races, actually was a much more competitive and um, so we, what we've done is we've re recreated a, uh, a uh, 1969 George Fulmer um, edition Mustang and no other than George Fulmer himself. We asked him to drive it today to actually show it off uh, on that. And then welcome George. And uh, maybe a lot of you don't uh, know is that George and I were teammates. George uh, drove the Celine Mustangs uh, in 1987 to uh, help us win the championship that year. And then also George and I were teammates in driving the Ranger pickup uh, factory truck team on that. So we've been able to get along and bump into each other and it's only appropriate today to, I think, have a tribute <laughs> to um, to have uh, George Jonas today and uh, and pay a tribute to the man in the car that made a lot of memories for all of us. So, George. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for coming. It's uh, a big day for me. Uh, Steve has uh, done his usual superb job of uh, creating a car. Uh, the work he does, his crews and his shop, uh, phenomenal detail. and. Uh, if you get a chance to get close to this car, you'll see how nice it is put together. And of course, it's a Ford Mustang, so that's, that, was, that was a good start. This, uh, I think, represents this car very well uh, for a street car, and it's a current design. There's some of the things on this car I wished I had had on that car. <laughs> that car will outhandle this car. So it's a beautiful car, and. Uh, I hope you'll all appreciate it. Uh, if you get a chance to drive one or get in one, you'll you'll know how good it is. So, thank you again all for coming, and uh, I hope that everything works out for everybody and have a good success with these cars. Steve, thanks again. Don't don't go away. Um, a 
little bit about the car, and again, George wishes that he had the uh, had this car on the racetrack. Obviously, we've recreated the uh, the paint scheme um, to be very similar to the car that he drove in 1969, if he can remember back that far. But that's uh, <laughs> the. Um, it has the latest in sus uh, suspension, and we even duplicated the Watts Link uh, rear suspension that is on this car, is now on this car as well. We redu reduplicated too the mini light wheels that were the original race car, as you see them translated to, to the new car. The more, the more important one though is actually the arrow and some of the other touches, but it really gets down to the engine, and this is driven by a 302 uh, cubic inch motor the same as George except that this one has more horsepower so I don't know if you could actually handle that but it's uh, you know 475 to 500 horsepower so we'll have a lot of fun with that but it also has a radio in it so that I don't know yeah and air conditioning so it, it, it has in, improved e immensely we are doing as we are with all of these cars so we are doing these to 250 units only as a very limited run of the car so it'll be 250 of george's car 250 of of the donahue camaro and 250 of the savage barracuda um, the reason for the 250 is that most of the races that were run in that era were approximately 250 miles long and one of the key races that we had, again, as part of the tribute to this, was the Mission Bell 250 that was at Riverside Raceway. And that's where all of these cars and the iconic cars ran as well. And today we have from the Riverside Museum, I want to point out that we have Doug um, uh, Magnan, who is keeping all of the uh, uh, heritage of the race cars and everything has joined us and part of our identity that will be with all of these cars will be with the Riverside uh, Raceway track in fact so much that underneath the floor mats in all of the cars if you look we actually have the replica of the uh, Riverside racetrack that's engraved in all the floor mats as part of the the uh, touch and feel things that that are kind of unique about the com car Right now, there's only one other thing left that we need to do, and that's George, you and I, if you'll join me down, you and I need to sign the dash on car number one here and make it official. So we'll go ahead and sign that real quick. I think he misspelled George. <laughs> I, was, I was signing Carnelli. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Just Number raise the one. price. In some people's mind, other people don't. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we appreciate your attendance this afternoon.